Black Spectacles is the architect's website for learning design software. This is just one of thousands of tutorials we've built to help you stay current and stay a step ahead of the competition. After this video, check out blackspectacles.com to gain unlimited access to all of our courses. We're going to um, get started on a slightly more complex definition. I'm going to go ahead and delete um, this circle from prior. I have this definition up here, um, just a quick uh, tool. Whenever something is shown in this light gray color, it displays. If you select it, it turns green, and it also turns green in the Rhino display over here. You can always hide those things from display, and you can just right click on any tool and, and select this preview window, and it'll actually turn off the preview. So for right now, we're not going to be using these particular components, so we'll just uh, uh, turn off the display on those. I've taken the liberty of putting together a little bit, a, a preview of, of the kind of grasshopper uh, definition that we'll be working on. And so with generative modeling, what you're creating, you know, the fancy word for it is an algorithm. An algorithm is just basically a set, a string of um, both inputs and uh, operations that you've done to those inputs that are tied together in order to do some useful thing. So whatever it creates. So, you know, I think algorithm can be a little bit of an intimidating word, um, but in general, it's uh, just a string of things tied together that do something at the end of the day. So this definition has a series of different types of inputs. Um, and so you can see here all kind of numeric uh, types of inputs. Um, these are a variation of the slider. And let's just, I guess, take a step back even from there and say, what are we producing today? So um, I'm going to go ahead and right click on here, turn on the preview. And so we are um, developing just this pattern, a uh, simple pattern that could be a uh, glass frit pattern, for instance, or some kind of wall pattern. It's a simple gradation of dots on a hexagonal grid. And so from a, a kind of a smaller size dot gradating um, to the right with a larger size dot. And I've um, developed quite a few patterns uh, with Grasshopper in the past. Um, I'm working on a project right now that uh, is, uh, has a frit pattern, and uh, the frit pattern was all developed in Grasshopper. And I think getting back to the kind of usefulness of generative modeling in general is that I could run through when I was developing the pattern, looking at large scale prints of it, looking at glass samples, I could go through a lot of different iterations of the density of pattern, um, the style of pattern, whether it's on a hex grid or rectangular grid, um, and look at it and run through all those things quite quickly. And really kind of just, um, as opposed to each time wanting to adjust the patterns, you know, having to go back and do all this kind of busy work of redrawing this thing in the typical kind of 3D modeling way, I could quickly create these kind of iterations that allow me to really kind of uh, see the full extent and the range of possibilities. So just to show you a couple pictures. So this is just a couple shots of actually the mock-up, uh, glass mock-up that we had for this project. You can see here the pattern is a ceramic frit on the glass. And um, it's just a simple kind of gradation at the end of the day. There's some further complexities in the algorithm and how I dealt with you know, uh, measuring the actual density, so knowing that at certain areas it's 50%, in certain areas it's 20%. Um, and what's great about these definitions is that I have this to always go back to. So no matter if I have another project in the future, um, I have this definition saved in an archive folder, I can always go back to it to create whatever kind of uh, patterns that I would like. So you're really, you're creating your own kind of tool bag. So once you've set it up once, you know, theoretically, you can always go back to this thing and it can, you know, use it to create whatever pattern you want. And so I think it's um, really, that, that's where the real potential of generative modeling is, is you can create your own set of tools, your own, you know, pseudo programs that do exactly what you want them to do um, and kind of extend your ability in that way. Um, just a couple other quick photos. Um, kind of get the full extent of the glass and how it's gradating. So you can see the dots kind of going smaller up here. So this is actually the larger scale mock-up that we're doing, but you can see here as testing out different um, glass types in combination with different fret, fret densities. And generally you can see the, the fret gradates from being more opaque um, at what is a spandrel condition to gradating to being more transparent at a vision condition. So, and then it gradates back down. 
But these are, you know, again, a number of different densities in combination with looking at different glass types and seeing how those kind of work together. Any one of these patterns would have taken me two days to, not two days, but it would take me quite a bit of time to generate um, in a traditional sense and to kind of have the flexibility just to even get to this point of kind of uh, looking at a few patterns as opposed to a broad spectrum of patterns. Just a quick picture of the project. We're kind of under construction right now, um, but you can kind of get a sense of the actual um, frit and how it's affecting the actual kind of rendering of the elevation where there's a spandrel condition um, at the uh, slab edges. And then from there, uh, actually a, a, a knee wall condition also. And then how it gradates up and then how it gradates back down. So, and you know, this project in general, we use Grasshopper not only for pattern making, but we use it for uh, you know, figuring out the, uh, how to rationalize the geometry of the building, how to do the, the solar shade that you see as this kind of uh, diamond shape pattern also. So I think once you learn how to use generative modeling, how to use Grasshopper, it can really, you know, I find that I use it almost every day um, in particular instances. It's just through certain things that are just much quicker and you'll find are, are much more extendable if you do them in Grasshopper. And um, as you become kind of more equipped with the software, you'll find yourself using it more and more. But it really is kind of a complete change from the traditional modeling type in a sense. You can find the next tutorial in this course on blackspectacles.com. Just click the link below this video. And for other tutorials in architecture software, check out blackspectacles.com. It's the architect's website for learning design software with courses in software like CAD, Revit, Rhino, 3ds Max, Grasshopper, Photoshop, and many more. Visit blackspectacles.com now to see more free tutorials and to gain unlimited access to our entire course library.